So there's one last thing that might be uh, useful for you to know for class. So this is the basic tour of our studio and how to interact with it and how to set up scripts and save them and do so in a way that'll make it easy for uh, you to load data for all the R tutorials moving forward. But one of the things that might be, um, but I just wanted to share a different way of taking our tutorial notes in class um, that might be useful for some of you. What I have shown you with scripts, the R scripts are really the workhorse of working with R. Uh, a lot of your programming needs for projects, you'll want to store as scripts. But there are scenarios where a different file format than an R script might be really useful, and this is one of them. Um, and in particular, there's a, a type of file that you can create in RStudio called an R notebook. And the R notebooks are really nice for cases where you need to be able to have a nice integration between text and R code. And so, as you can see, taking notes in class uh, about our tutorials, uh, your thoughts about what I'm saying, what you're thinking, uh, things that you want to be able to remember, like there's a lot of text that you may want associated with the R code that we're talking about in class. And these R notebooks can be a really nice way of, of doing, this, uh, seam, doing this in a kind of a seamless way. I'm going to show you what an R notebook is. You could use it or not use it. It is totally up to you on what, you, what, uh, what way of recording information about these R tutorials is going to work best for you. So let's open up our studio. Oops, let me share my screen. So let me share my R studio with you. And um, first, I want to show you what one of these our studio, uh, one of these R notebooks looks like. I'm going to show you one of mine. I'm going to open a file, my demos, uh, and here's one. Here's an R notebook that I've done for class. Uh, first, you'll see that instead of just having a .r as a extension, it's a .rmd. True. Is this an RMD or is this a notebook? Never mind. So let me just show you. Uh, so let me just show you a notebook and what it can do. To create an R notebook in R Studio, go up to File, or you can go up to this little icon right here, and just select the R notebook option. It will automatically generate a file for you. So this is this is a blank R notebook, um, but it comes populated with uh, some basic information to help orient you uh, as to what's where. There's basically two. There are two main three. There are three main aspects of an R notebook. Um, there's this header component up here. You see the title, our notebook, and how it is going to be output. One of the nice things about our notebooks is not only do you have this file, but you can save them in, an, a, a, in a different file format that integrates everything in, in a very pleasing look. And, and we'll see that at the end of this, uh, this video. Um, so uh, let's say I have opened up my new R notebook, and I'm going to say this is my class, this is my title. And uh, what you'll see is there's a bunch of text here and none of it has that number sign I was telling you to do to comment it out. And that's because the way the R notebook set is set up, R already knows that this is all, that none of this is R code. The R code is actually being held in very specific blocks um, and only those blocks are going to be, can be run as, as R code. So, and those blocks look like uh, this gray. One of the things you have to do, one of the things that should pop out at you is that in the R scripts video, I told you that if you wanted to leave yourself uh, notes, you had to start your every line with a number sign. Um, and that was a, a way of commenting out a section of text 
um, and preventing R from trying to run it like it's code. What you'll see here is this first part is all text. This is, there's nothing code about this, this uh, first couple of paragraphs. And there's no number signs. That's because the way the R notebook is set up, that is because the way the, an R notebook is set up is that um, all the R code is being kept in very specific blocks which you can see here in this gray, uh, gray shaded area. This area, this gray area, is where our code goes, and that is the only place where you can run our code. And this is because the notebook is set up in a way that R Studio and R are talking to each other in a way, and that's because R Studio and, and the notebooks are talking to each other in a way that that uh, only our code. R code has to be put into these special chunks in order to be run by R. And, uh, and what a nice feature of this then is that you can write yourself notes. So I'm going to get rid of all of this text so you can just see this. Um, I can write my notes here and remember that uh, I need to insert specific blocks where I can write my R code. R code. So how do I do that? I'm going to get rid of this so that you can see me at it. And when I want to insert some R code, all I do is go up to this, uh, this insert icon here and I want to insert R. And now I have this little area where I can insert, uh, I can insert whatever R code I want to be inserting. So say I want to uh, load some data. Data equals read.csv and loadin.controls.csv. And then if I want to run this, I can click on this little arrow here and it'll run just this chunk. Or I can run, I can run, push this icon right here, and it'll run all any R chunks that came before. So let me put one up before it. I'll insert another R chunk. And this one, I'm just gonna load a package um, uh, that is commonly used for doing community ecology uh, type analyses. For doing a uh, for doing analyses in ecology, and I'll do this. Oops. Oh, good. It's just telling me that uh, it's just letting me know that the little package. And so, and so when you run one of these uh, blocks. You under that block, you'll get whatever output is coming from uh, from that code. And in this case, this is just the information that would normally pop up in R if I ran a ran this, um, telling me that this is loaded and what other things it what other packages it had to load in order to load this package. And then I can. And then I can and then I can run these. So I'll press the button so it should run. Okay. And then I can run these. So I'll run this chunk. And my computer is something's wrong with my computer. That's awesome. Great timing. And then I can run these. Except just like an R script, I, R doesn't know exactly where my data files are. So just like with the R script, and 
but then I can run one of these blocks. And so I'm going to run this one. And so two things. One, uh, any output from running that code will show up right underneath that block of code, which is really nice. So if you tell it to plot a graph, it'll show up right underneath that block of code. If you tell it to run an analysis and output some information from that analysis, it'll show up right underneath that block of code. And so what you can do is then structure your file so that you have notes that explain what you're about to do. You have the code, which is the example of what you're doing. You can have any notes after that, that you'll have the output from that code that shows up. And then below that, you can explain uh, what it is that is generated or things that you should be looking for in that output. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's a really nice way to create these, these kind of integrated notes um, when you're working with computer code. The other thing to note is that, as you'll see here, it popped up an error because I tried to load, it, load a, a data file, but it doesn't know where it is. So just like the R scripts, if you make an R notebook, you have to save it in the uh, working directory where your data files are. And so we'll do that here. I'll save as, uh, we'll call it notebook demo. And we're gonna save it here. And you still have to set your working directory. So we'll go up to session, set working directory to source file location, just like we did with the R script a couple of videos ago. See down in the console window that this uh, working directory has been set. And now if I run this block of code, you'll see no errors pop up and the data um, data has popped up in my global environment over here on the right. And if we want to look and see uh, what that data looks like to make sure that it imported okay, we can just click on data in the global environment and it'll pop up a window that shows us what the data file looks like. And, and you're ready to rock and roll. So uh, that's it for the, the basic R tutorials. If you have any questions, you should feel free to ask um, and I'll provide some links in the module for this um, that provide some other locations where you can look for information um, on the basics of R Studio and R scripts and that kind of thing. All right. See you in class.